Hi everyone, and welcome along to Ergonomically Speaking, the podcast that aims to help you reduce or even eliminate work-related discomfort. I'm your host, Neve Pentony of Boyne Ergonomics, and I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode. Before we get into the meat and bones of this episode, which is going to be all about what I think are the top five most desirable pieces of equipment for people who are working at a computer workstation, I'd like to just do a little bit of housekeeping. So firstly, thank you so much to the people who've gotten in touch to say that the episode about DSE posture was really helpful and they were able to make adjustments while they were listening to the podcast. Um, That's what this is all about. I'm just hoping to provide really practical, usable information and advice for either you if you're sitting at the computer workstation or in a workplace or if you look after people who do. Um, And the other thing I want to touch on is... um, yeah, look, if my voice sounds a little bit funny or a little bit snuffly, I'm just getting over a dose. <clears throat> so please excuse me if I have to clear my throat a few times um, on the other side of it and feeling so much better. So as I mentioned, today's episode is about what I call the DSE desirables. So episode four, the last episode, I touched on your five mo- most basic pieces of equipment that you need if you're going to work safely at a computer workstation. So your chair your desk, your screen, your keyboard, your mouse. Those are just the essentials. You really have to have them to be able to work safely. But there's additional pieces of equipment that I have found over the years really, really help improve posture, improve positioning and improve mobility when you're working at the computer workstation. So I like to call these my desirables. They're not the essentials, but they really do help make a difference. So the five pieces of equipment that I'm going to talk about today are your footrests, your additional phone supports, a phone stand, a riding slope, and your wireless headset. So firstly, the footrest. As I've mentioned before, the ideal seated posture is elbows level with the table and feet on a stable surface. If you're vertically challenged like me, that stable surface usually has to be a footrest because I can't reach the floor when my elbows are level with the table. And that's fine. Now, that does not mean that footrests are only useful in that situation. So if you're sitting at a computer workstation, a footrest can be really, really handy just to provide you with an alternative stable place to put your feet when you're sitting at the desk. And what it can help to do is it discourages you from crossing your legs, which puts all the weight through on the hip bones and when you're sitting bones and it just causes imbalances. And it also stops you from crossing your ankles and tucking your feet underneath your chair, which can put stress on the knees and make you feel less stable, increasing the workload on the hip and the back. So footrests are not just for people who can't reach the floor. They are really, really useful. As I said, stable place to put your feet. You could have your feet on the floor. You could put one foot on the footrest, take it back, put the other foot on the footrest, take it back, up and down. It gives you stability. It gives you mobility. And it doesn't have to be a footrest, like an office style footrest. For me, it could be a foam roller. It could be a yoga brick. It could be the old phone books that we used to have back in the day. Anything, anywhere else just to put your feet. I do find the footrests that are tilted quite handy because it helps to keep you sitting back against your chair. Foam rollers are great as long as they're not too tall so they don't push your knees up over your hips because they give you a little bit of mobility in the lower limbs with the extra stability and the alternative place to put your feet. And the other group that footrests are really handy for is the pregnant worker. If you are pregnant and you work at a computer, I do always recommend you have a footrest. I will do a dedicated episode related to pregnancy and computer use. But for now, just a general tip, if you're listening to this and you're pregnant, I do recommend you get yourself a footrest. And one thing to be really wary of, for someone like me, as I said, If I use a footrest under my feet, it's not going to change my knee position. It's not going to negatively impact my knee position relative to my hip. All it's going to do is bring my knee level. But if you are of average or above average height and your feet do reach the floor when you're sitting at your desk and you want to start using a footrest, just make sure that whatever you're using, footrest, foam roller, yoga brick, whatever it may be, does not push your knee up over your hip. So it shouldn't be so tall that it pushes your knee up over your hip because that is going to pull on the lower back. So that's where the tilted slanted office footrest can come in handy. 
or the low level yoga bricks because it just gives you that alternative solid base without pushing your knee up over your hip. But it is a really useful piece of kit and I do think most people should have one. The next piece of equipment that I'm going to touch on is a foam back support. Now these come in all shapes and sizes. You can get them that will go the length of the chair. You can get triangular shaped ones. You can get small little rolls. You can get ones that are shaped like a D. They're all different shapes and sizes. But what I think is if you're using a chair that does not have adjustable back support. So either you're talking your kitchen chair, you're talking the office style chair where the backrest cannot be adjusted. So it might be a mesh back office chair that has no extra lumbar support or the backrest can't be adjusted in height. And no matter what you do, you just cannot feel that support in your lumbar curve. What I say to people is get an extra foam back support and use it. If there is a day where you're going to put in long hours, it's a tough day, you have a lot ahead of you, put it on the chair, make sure it sits in the curve of your lower back not at the very base of your spine, but actually in the curve. And it can be, as I said, it could be a foam back support. And the reason I recommend the foam back supports is they're made to give you the support for an eight hour day working at a computer workstation. That's what they're supposed to do. So if you're using a chair that either, it's a kitchen chair, you can't adjust it at all. It's an office chair that just does not have a good level of adjustment or you feel it doesn't have enough adjustment for you because there are thousands of types of office chairs out there and a lot of them are great. But you could have a really brilliant office chair that is totally suitable for 95% of your workforce. There will be the 5% that just cannot get the positioning right for one reason or another or doesn't provide enough support. Maybe their lumbar curve is a little bit deeper. So I always think that really everyone should have an extra foam back support to put on the chair. You may use it all the time. You may only use it every now and then if you're feeling a bit sore, sore, sorry, or a bit of discomfort. That's fine, but I do think everyone should have one. So those are two pieces of equipment that really would just give you an extra level of support when you're sitting working on a computer. The next two pieces of equipment that I'm going to talk about are going to impact your positioning, your posture. And they're really going to look at the upper body, the neck, the upper back, and the shoulders. So For a lot of people, myself included, the mobile phone is actually an extra screen at the workplace. It's on the desk. We use it when we're working, whether we use it for work purposes or whether it's for personal use. We look at our phones when we're working. And with that in mind, most of us, if you look at yourself now or look at yourself the next time you hold your phone, where are you holding it? Most people hold their phone kind of around belly button level, maybe slightly a little bit higher. And they look down at the phone. Very few people will actually bring the phone up to their eye level or close to their eye level. Most people hold the phone down and look down. All you have to do is, like, if you're standing in a bus station or you're standing in a train station and you're standing somewhere where people are waiting or you're in like a doctor's waiting room or something like that, look around at people looking at their phones. They're all looking down. The same thing happens when you're looking at your phone and you're sitting at the computer workstation. So you have may have put the time and the effort into getting your work screen, your laptop screen and your monitor positioning right. And that's brilliant. But every time you look at your phone, you're looking down, putting extra stress and tension and extra workload on the neck and the shoulder muscles, causing you to round your shoulders and causing extra stress and compression forces on the discs in the neck. So I always recommend to people to think of the mobile phone as a screen when you're sitting at the desk. Raise it up, get a height adjustable phone stand, place it beside your screen and pop the phone on it. That way, if you get a notification or you need to use the phone, it's in front of you. You can reach out, activate it, look at the screen without looking down and without causing all this extra workload on your neck and shoulders and without compressing the discs in your neck. So phone position, really, we do need to start thinking of thinking of our phones as an extra piece of work kit. They're on the desks. We use them during the day. We don't lock them away for the eight hours that we're at the desk. They're there. They're an active part of our day. So positioning is really important to reduce your risk of injury, especially in the upper body. With that in mind, 
if you work off paper documents, whether it's at home or whether it's in the office, I find what we call the combined document holder or writing slope as a really, really useful tool. Now, I will say definitely more suited for some people in the office purely because they can take up a lot of physical space on the desk and not everybody has the depth available to place a screen, a writing slope and a keyboard and then still have a little bit of space left to support the forearm. So um, if you're not sure what a writing slope is, like I'm sure we all know what a footrest is and a foam support and a phone holder. But if you want to see what I mean when I say a combined document holder writing slope, if you look up the micro desk copy holder or the flex desk 640 and Google those and just have a look. That's what I mean. And I just should add also this podcast is not sponsored. Nobody has paid me to put those names in. These are just two pieces of kit that I have recommended in the past. And I've got really good feedback on and I've used them myself and I, I find them really useful. What they do is they change how you position your paperwork relative to yourself and relative to your keyboard. So what I see a lot both in the office and on the virtual home assessments is most people will have their monitor, their keyboard and the notebook and then themselves in that order in a straight line. So people will position the notebook between themselves and between the keyboard. So firstly, when you're taking your notes, you're looking down quite directly down because the keyboard, the notebook is really close to you. You're looking down, you're writing your notes. If you then need to reply to an email or do a bit of typing, most people don't reposition the notebook and pull the keyboard closer. Most people will actually lean over the notebook and type on the keyboard, which means you're leaning away from your backrest, you're rounding your shoulders, you're flexing your shoulders, you're putting extra workload and extra strain on the upper body. What you can do, of course, is if you're only taking a few little notes, I recommend using a spiral bound notebook, flipping it over on its side and putting it underneath your mouse or on your left hand side, if you're left handed to the side of the keyboard and writing your notes that way. But some people, their roles involve physical hard copy paper files, physical hard copy invoices. And a lot of times they're referencing from these paper documents to the screen and back. They're taking information from the paper documents, putting it on the screen or they're checking it against each other. And that can cause a lot of repetitive neck movements and really tightening and poor shoulder posture. If you have the combined document holder writing slope, what you do is you position it between your screen and your keyboard. So your keyboard stays close to you. Your keyboard will be your next piece of equipment next to you. Then you will have your paperwork. Then you will have your screen. The copy holders writing slopes are angled upwards. So when you put your paperwork on it, it's not flat. It's angled towards you, already reducing how much you have to look down, how much you have to flex the neck. It's positioned directly under your screen. So if you are referencing, it's in with easy within your visual fields. There's no big neck movements, no hugely repetitive neck movements if you're referencing. And then if, for example, you do need to jot notes, well, they're wider than a standard keyboard. So you just pull it towards you, sit back in your chair, jot your notes. It's still angled upwards. You're not going to be slouched and rounded over the documents when you're writing. It just really helps to keep you upright when you're at the workstation and you need to work off paper documents and the screen. Now, I will say not everybody needs this piece of equipment, but it is definitely a desirable piece of equipment if you do a lot of note taking, if you work with a lot of hard copy paperwork and if you have the depth on your desk. So for most people, if you have a desk that is about 70 centimetres deep to 80 centimetres deep, you should have room to accommodate a writing slope. They are really, really useful, but take up a lot of space, but definitely a desirable piece of equipment if you work with hard copy paperwork or you take a lot of notes and do a lot of writing. It can really avoid a lot of shoulder tension and a lot of neck, neck discomfort. And the last piece of kit that I'm going to talk about in this episode in terms of desirable DSE equipment, and this one is really focused on mobility. And you know what? No, it's not a sit-stand desk. It's a wireless headset. Now, I will come to sit-stand desks in another episode. I think I'm going to do a whole dedicated episode. Someone has requested it. Um, and they're really useful. They have their place. But they are not 
the be all and end all in terms of mobility at the workstation and mobility is so important we need to be getting up out of the chair we need to be leaving the desk leaving the screen leaving the keyboard let our body relax and um, every as i've said before roughly every 45 minutes now the biggest thing that has changed with the shift to home working is everything has been done virtually including our meetings so initially when covid hit and we were all jumping ship to work home i in, did think that this was going to be positive i was like oh this is great you know people are going to work from home and they're going to get up and stick the washing on and they're going to be prepping the dinner during the work day or they're going to be you know doing bits around the house helping with the kids you know there's going to be so much more movement in their day this is great how wrong was i because i did not foresee the increase in virtual meetings which of course when you look back of course it's required we all still have to collaborate we all still need to work we need to do our courses and they had to be done remotely so of course video call and video meetings was the way it was going to go but they are the biggest factor that keep people tied to the desk that keep people sitting at the desk for periods more than 45 minutes and some for some people and some days we're talking hours back to back video calls one after the other and Yes, you can, of course, implement policies where they have to finish at 10 to the hour, et cetera, et cetera. But people don't leave the desk when you do that. They catch up on their emails or they prep for the next meeting. That's just the reality of it. So we need to find ways to get the mobility in during the meeting. How do we do that? We go wireless. Your wireless headset, your wireless earbuds, whatever it needs to be, means that you can be in the meeting but not in your chair. Now, I'm not saying that we have our cameras off all the time. I know a lot of companies do prefer to have their employees on camera for their meetings. And that's absolutely fine. But there is no need for anyone to be on camera for the entirety of every single video call. So what I encourage people to do is get a wireless headset or provide wireless headsets if you are the employer and allow people, let it be known and lead by example. That it is okay to turn off your camera for a minute, two minutes, three minutes during a video call and get up and walk around your room. Get up and pace your workspace. Go get a glass of water. Whatever you need to do. You're not leaving the meeting. You can still hear everything. They can still hear you talking. It's just you're allowing yourself the physical break from the chair, from the keyboard, from the mouse and from the screen. You're giving your body the movement it needs to rejuvenate, to boost your circulation, to boost your respiratory rate and to keep your body healthy and taken over. So I think if I had to pick in terms of what improves mobility more, if I had to pick between a wireless headset and a sit stand desk, the wireless headset wins hands down. I have both and I can tell you the wireless headset has been an absolute godsend in the last two years. So allowing yourself the freedom to leave the desk, even if you have eight hours of back to back video calls. And of course, you're going to have to be on camera for a proportion of it, especially if you're presenting. But in every meeting, there will come an opportunity for you to turn off the camera and get up and walk around. Um, I know something I recommend a lot is logging into meetings via your phone if you're not presenting. But, you know, it's not always possible. Sometimes we need the screen. Sometimes we need to screen share. But at least if you have the wireless headset or earbuds, you can get up and pace around while you're on that call. And I think that is so important. Your equipment and your posture, of course, is important, but so is your mobility levels. And a wireless headset allows you to not just stand, but allows you to leave the work desk. And I think that's incredibly important. So, as I said, my top five BSE desirables are your footrest, your extra phone back support, your phone stand, your writing slope, and your wireless headset. There are, of course, hundreds and hundreds of other types of equipment that you can get for your DSE workstation, like, for example, the different types of keyboards, the different types of mice. I will, of course, get to them in another episode because they do suit different people. But these five pieces of equipment that I've talked about are really for the general population who work at the computer workstation and have no major issues, maybe the odd bit of stiffness, the odd bit of tightness here and there. But generally speaking, just the general population, they're fit, they're well, they're healthy. They would just like to get a little bit more support, improve positioning and importantly, increase your mobility from the workstation. So 
thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Um, what I will say is, feel free, please, to follow me on social media. I post quite regularly and you'll find all topics that I'm going to get around to covering in this podcast at some stage. But covering topics on my social media like pregnancy, driving is a big one. A lot of us drive for work and specialist types of equipment that can be useful to you. So feel free to follow me. I will put all my social media details in the show notes. And until next time, everyone listen, have a really, really great week. <laughs>